Rivian's IPO is scheduled for November 9th, and it's roughly valued around $65 billion. With that being said, I want to look at Rivian and what they plan to do in the next several years in terms of production capacity, what types of vehicles they're going to be selling, um, some estimates on their price to earnings on a forward-looking basis, some assumptions I made, and then I want to kind of compare them to some of the major auto manufacturers like Tesla, which is one of going to be probably their main competitor in the EV space, and then just in comparison to uh, some of the other main manufacturers as well as well as relatively how much capital they've raised versus um, Tesla. So stick around, this is gonna be an interesting one. All right, here's what we know about Rivian right now. So far they've delivered 44 trucks. They hope to deliver 1,000 by the end of 2021 this year. And they plan to fulfill the 50,000 trucks that have been pre-ordered by the end of 2023. So it'll take about two years or about 25,000 trucks manufactured a year to reach that goal. They plan to uh, deliver about 100,000 vans through 2025, so those are pre-ordered vans, and they estimate delivering about 1,000 in the first year in 2022, and they've already raised about $10 billion thus far, and in the IPO, they're hoping to raise about $8 billion in additional. That would value the company at about $6 billion currently, and Right now, their manufacturing capacity at their one facility is about 150,000 that they estimate with a max of 200,000 if they made some improvements to the factory. All right, next I wanna look at some different scenarios on what Rivian hopes to do over the next several years. I wanna look at some, uh, a downside, um, you know, what they think they're going to do, and then look at two aggressive scenarios um, to kind of see what that would look like in terms of evaluation, looking at P&E, um, a forward P&E for 2024. Um, so in scenario one, this is if Rivian doesn't deliver on what they anticipate by 2020, by 2024. Um, so we're assuming that in the next two years, if they're going to meet their 50,000 truck deliveries, that they got to have an average of 25,000. I am assuming uh, production will ramp up in 2023 to be more than 25,000 a year and demand will probably increase. But let's say it doesn't in 2024 and we're looking at, again, staying at 25,000 trucks and 10,000 Sprinter vans. Again, they plan to do 10,000 Sprinter vans just in 2022. So that's assuming they have no growth in 2023 and in 2024. Average selling price of those tr um, trucks and vans are 80,000 and 55,000 respectively with a margin of about 15%. Now that margin is low when you compare it to Tesla, which is around 25 to 30%, but it is high when you compare it to GM at around 7% and Ford around 10%. So um, you know, this is kind of a, you know, meet in the middle kind of uh, margin there. So that brings their net income for um, full year 2024 at about $383 million or for P&E of about 169.7. Um, and this notes that Rivian meets half of the delivery goals for 2023. Um, so in scenario two, we have um, 50,000 trucks delivered. So, you know, they're they're producing 50, they're able to produce and deliver 50,000 trucks in full year 2024. Um, they are able to deliver 20,000 uh, vans in 2024. Average selling price of 80 and 55, just like in scenario one, with a margin um, on the low side of Tesla at 25%. Um, so that brings their net income at $1.275 billion with a Ford P&E of about 50. Now, they wouldn't be able to reach this production until end of 2023, two-year window to get to that manufacturing speed. And so this is assuming that by the end of uh, 2023, that they're able to whip out 50,000 uh, trucks a year, which it, which their current plan is to only be able to do that in the first two. It's going to take them two years, full year 2022 and 2023, to get that many trucks produced. So... Um, I'm a little skeptical if they're going to be able to hit that target of 50,000 a year, but it is a it is a possibility. Now, scenario three and scenario four are like a lot more aggressive in comparison. It's assuming in 2024 they're able to produce 75,000 and deliver 75,000 trucks, 30,000 vans, which is about 6.2 uh, percent of the delivery van market. Now. Um, it seems like more with, with that 100,000 uh, pre-orders of delivery vans, this could um, be a realistic scenario. And as more fleets look to appear that they're going to go towards the EV side, 
this could actually be a realistic number, but 6.25% for a company that's only gonna be producing vehicles for about two and a half years at this assumption, or two and a half, three years at this assumption, seems a little aggressive as a percentage of market share. But um, with that being said, I increased the average selling price to about 85 and 60,000 respectively. And these are at current today's prices. So inflation goes up, these selling prices may go up. Um, but these are on the, I would say lower, like the truck is on the lower side of the vehicle sales and the 60 is, I mean, I'm not really sure. It, it's pretty close to what the vans are priced at right now. On the margin side, this is getting closer to Tesla as well at 27.5, indicating about a net income in full year 2024 of 2.245 billion, um, or a forward p and &E about 28.95. Um, and then in scenario four, which I think is very aggressive for full year 2024, we're able to produce and deliver 100,000 trucks, 50,000 uh, vans, which is about 10% of the van market. So even more aggressive on that side. And the average selling price is 90 to $65,000. And the margin on those vehicles is about 30%. So that brings their net income at about 3.67 billion dollars, which is um, you know a very good chunk of change. And the Ford P and E based off of a $60 billion IPO valuation is about 17.71 um, Ford P and E. All right, so next up, I wanna talk some lessons learned from other car manufacturers and how it relates to Rivian. Tesla being the major um, competitor to Rivian as they're the main um, EV producer currently, although other manufacturers are quickly entering into the EV race. Now, Tesla was founded in 2003. They record their first profit in 2020. And for full year 2020, they're able to deliver about 500,000 cars. And their current P&E is 396. Their net income for the trailing 12 months is $3.46 billion. So when you compare that to the very aggressive scenario, scenario four, um, you know, that kind of seems a little far-fetched when you compare it to Tesla just is now making that after 17 years. Um, and Tesla first hit a $65 billion market cap in December of 2019. So not all that long ago, almost, you know, right at two years now, Tesla finally hit $65 billion valuation and Rivian is going to IPO at about that same valuation with almost zero, well, you know, not um, effectively zero deliveries, about 44, maybe 100, um, and Tesla had 367 deliveries when they hit that same market cap of $65 billion. So it just shows you how much these car um, EV companies are being valued in comparison to what Tesla was at the same time, and Tesla was actually delivering vehicles in mass, you know, relative mass quantity, not in comparison to their other um, peers. So let's look at that. So Ford, um, their current market cap is at 77 billion, GM at 84, and Toyota at 290 billion. The cars manufactured by those companies in 2020 was 1.7 million, 6.8 million, and 8.8 .8 million respectively. And the revenue comparison was Ford was at 127, GM at 122, and Toyota at $275 billion in revenue. So just looking at comparison-wise, um, from, a, from a market cap perspective, uh, Rivian is going to be producing less than, let's say in, um, let's say the very aggressive scenario, they'll be producing about um, 150,000 cars compared to Ford, GM, and uh, Toyota at 1.7, 6.8, and 8. And they're going to be basically right around the same market cap. Um, and even with the same growth rate, um, I just, you know, it seems very, uh, you know, these these market caps and the, the valuations of these EV companies are very, you know, I understand growth, but they just seem very, very far off. So these are some things that you want to note that Rivian's valuation, even compared to Tesla at the same point in time, it seems pretty far off. As we mentioned earlier, Rivian has already raised $10 billion pre-IPO. And in the IPO, they're looking to raise about another $8 billion. Now we compare that to Tesla. I think it's important just kind of see you know, in a dollar perspective, you know, when we're talking about billions of dollars, people just kind of go, well, whatever, it's it's a billion dollars. But just compared to what Tesla has raised. So from 2010 to 
to 2018, Tesla raised about $18.7 billion. And over that time, they really raised the majority of it in the last, between 2017 and 2018. But you just gotta think, you know, Tesla was producing a solid amount of vehicles in 2017 and 2018. And so I guess my whole point here is, you know, Rivian is still not producing a large amount of vehicles. They're gonna have a lot of capital on hand. They're burning through about a billion dollars a year at their current burn rate. Now for my thoughts. Now, when we look at Rivian, they've definitely raised a lot of capital and they're doing so in the IPO. As they probably move forward, their operating uh, expenses will continue to go. Their current burn rate is at a billion dollars. And as they start to produce and manufacture more vehicles, that is going to get even higher. Um, so I don't expect them to, you know, the first two years, there's going to be an even bigger burn rate on their capital. And so they're probably going to have to go back to capital markets and raise more and dilute shareholders even more. So I, I imagine they're going to go out and issue more shares, very similar to what Tesla has been doing. But if we look at what Rivian is being value at, at, at comparison to what even, even Tesla, even if you're a Tesla hater, even if you're a Tesla lover, you have to look at what Tesla was valued at versus what Rivian's being valued at right now. And you gotta be a little skeptical if you, you compare them apples to apples. I understand that Tesla is at you know almost 400 P&E right now, but they're actually producing vehicles. They're, doing, they're actually doing some of the things that they said they were going to do 10 years ago when they were going to go out of business and they didn't have enough capital. So there's some things about Tesla that are, I think, a little wacky, and but they're actually, you know, have decent cash flow. They're doing things. Um, are they worth $1.2 trillion? I don't know. It's debatable. But is, is Rivian, who's doing not even close to that, worth $65 billion? Um, it's, it's, it's very skeptical of this. And so sure the market could probably you know the market is probably going to withstand it um it's probably going to shoot up after its ipo um but is it really worth it how long is it going to take for the value proposition to actually realize um and is is ev trucks going to be the thing um i i cars i can understand there's a lot more cars produced than trucks and they're really heavily focused on the uh, truck, SUV, and van market, which, you know, they'll be one of the first into the van mark or the, the the SUV market. But that's not really where their focus is. It appears it appears like they're focused on the trucks and delivery vans because they have some pre-orders there. So, you know, I, I think there's some definitely major risk here. Um, I don't want to be a negative Nancy on Rivian. I think that they have solid funding that's that's the good news here i don't think they're going to go out of business and with the ipo again they're going to have plenty of access to capital um, the problem is how long is it going to take for shareholders to actually get the value that they um they think they are worth right now and that's that's the kind of question you have to ask yourself is rivian worth 65 billion dollars now yes or no and do you want to um, risk it with um really market exuberance in the EV space. And so you even have companies like, I'll stop right there, but the point is the EV space is definitely um, very fat right now and it, and it may continue moving forward. Um, so I'm not saying that, you know, they won't have capital appreciation or they never will. Um, we, you know, people have been proven wrong over and over again with Tesla, but the problem is, you know, we're still sitting there saying, they have to deliver. They have to deliver a quality vehicle. They have to deliver results on time and on budget. They have to be able to actually do what they say they, they want to do. And that and Tesla's at least proven that at this point. All right, so if I look at Rivian and I classify it into a risk profile, it's definitely high, high risk. Um, probability of it actually delivering on what we saw in the scenarios, in my opinion, is, I'm skeptical of it to say the least. And so with that being said, EVs are being valued at an all time high right now, EV manufacturers. And so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, please. And just know that, you know, you have to make the assumption that EVs are at least going to remain in the same, you know, valued at around the same, or they're going to go up in the future. And as more current manufacturers get into the EV space, is that valuation really going to continue going up or stay the same? 
I imagine it's going to go back down to what P&Es or what ratios have been for pretty much every company historically, or at least down to what um, you know technology companies are being valued. Why is EV being valued so much higher than even some of the best technology companies in the world? So, um, so all that to be said, it's a high risk investment. I would put it on the side of more of a you know. Don't worry, you know, put it in there, but don't think you're going to get your money back kind of investment. Um, so kind of make it as a write off if, if you want. Um, I, I personally will not be putting anything into Rivian unless there's a really strong dip in the stock price. More than likely it'll go up after IPO, but it's not an investment for me. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. I do videos on personal finance, investing and stock analysis. Thank you so much for watching today's video. My name is Frank, Frank Finance, out.